and gentlemen, please welcome into the ring from Brighton, Chris Eubank Jr. It's a family that divides opinion, but just about every sporting fan has agreed on one thing. It's a family brimming with talent, and this, the latest of the production line, Chris Eubank Jr. Now, plenty of people wondering what he's doing in a ring five or so weeks away from his biggest day yet. Back in 1990, his dad knocked out Reginaldo de Santos in one round just eight weeks before he beat Nigel Benn in nine to win the WBO middleweight title at the NEC. His history about to repeat itself, I suspect, against Omar Ciala. The fight may take less time than Bunsey's post-fight interview. Ladies and gentlemen, Frank Warren for Queensbury Promotions in association with Eubank Promotions and sponsored by Raynham Steel are proud to present our next contest this evening. It's eight three minute rounds in the middleweight division. Firstly, fighting out of the red corner with a record of 23 wins, 17 losses, three draws with 10 KOs to his name. Weighing in 11 stone, 3 pounds, and tonight he wears the black shorts. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from Hemelm, Germany, Omar Siala. <laughs> and across the ring in the blue corner, with an impressive unbeaten record that reads 17 wins with 12 KOs to his name. Weighing in 11 stone, 4 pounds, 3 ounces, and tonight he wears the green shorts. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting and introducing from Brighton, the explosive Chris Eubank Jr. Your referee in charge of the action is Alvin Finch of Manchester, who will now give his final instructions to both boxers. Okay, you both know the rules, obey my commands at all times. Defend yourselves at all times. When I say break, stop punching and step back cleanly. Good luck to both of you, touch good. Ladies and gentlemen, eight three minute rounds. Well, nobody's thinking this is a banana skin. Nobody's worried about what Omar Siala is gonna do tonight. <laughs> They're just hoping Chris Eubank so Jr. doesn't trip over the ring apron or damage one of those hands on the head of Siala. <laughs> How much work is he going to put in tonight? Does he just want to blast this guy out, make a statement, and then move on with the job? As ever, uh, with Chris Eubank Jr., you never know. Well, that's what he always wants to do, isn't he? He doesn't want to do too much work, only what's necessary. But like I keep saying, you know, he's, he's very lazy. He's boxing lower opposition, but when he lets his hands go, he looks something special. We've got to be honest, if, if he can do this at a higher level, and we'll find out next month, then he's a real dangerous and a, and a phenomenal fighter. Could he carry some power? That's for sure. And although he's won his last two, Siala, he has lost three of his last six, and every single one of those defeats came inside the first three rounds. Um, set the stopwatches, folks. I'm not sure we're going to get out of the first. He mixes it up, though, doesn't he, Eubank? To be fair, it's not, it's not all headshots with him. He's a heavy-handed guy. You know, he'd just be happy just to keep... It the bludgeon you to the head so you fall over. He, he, he looks to work the body as well. Absolutely. A little wide with the punches, yeah. maybe. And no, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to be that critical of him this, this time. I'm going to be all positive. <laughs> Ooh, a little cheeky uppercut. Meanwhile, over in Spain, a young man takes a deep breath. 
Oh, right hand lands and the ropes come to the rescue. The referee has a little look. He's keeping him up, isn't he? A smile. Oh, oh. big uppercut and another one. There's blood already coming from the nose of Ciara. Oh, big left hook as well. Oh, and another uppercut. The referee's having a good little look. He's and, and as Eubank goes for a wander, nods <laughs> to the crowd, looks at the canvas, and then decides oh, to come back it. to work. Those punch, some of those punches, he's so powerful, they're literally punches with the guard. And accurate too. He's very accurate with it. Like I say, when he lets his hands go, he looks something special. But he's not fighting opposition that are, that are going to give him any tests. He's not fighting opposition where he can practice some of the things that he's not so good at. All we see, you know, every time he fucks is all the stuff he's good at, being offensive, the tremendous power, and the variety in his shots, which is, to be honest, has been good enough and is good enough for most fighters. And as ever, the visualisation among boxing fans is, can he do this at the higher level as we head into the final few seconds? If you back the first round knockout, <laughs> But it could have been if he wanted it to, couldn't he? He's, he's kept this guy up. If he backed that first round knockout, I'm sorry. Dad's in the ring. Lovely polished shoes. I, I'm, I'm not sure how you describe that that particular sartorial get-up. Ah. Ah, can you hear that, folks? Brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> now we've we've seen it all. So I think someone, an inspector from the British yeah, Border Control. Yeah. It was funny because Steve Bunch just tapped me on the shoulder and said, "You know, the one cornerman in the ring at one time." And guess who stepped out? <laughs> it wasn't Dad. No, Ronnie Davis there and Chris Sanigan in the corner. Two real boxing men. Good men to have in your corner. Just when you thought you'd seen it all. But I don't think Chris Jr. listens to anybody. No. He's got his own mind, he knows what he wants to do, and does he need any help at the moment? Because he's having everything his own way. And I think this I think he'll get him out there in this role now. He wanna be he's had a little bit of a mess around. Give us a little bit of entertainment for three minutes. If anything, he might not want that sort of mini conflict in between rounds again. <laughs> <laughs> Quite like the colours, Barry, and his shorts, the, the sort of green and maroon angle. I, I don't know what the what the symbolism is. Quite yeah. natty. <laughs> Crowd getting into it. There's an element of the show about this. And he, Barry, he got a great reception when he was in Manchester. Yeah. He's had quite a good reception tonight in Liverpool too. Well, you know, I think it helps train a little bit off his dad's name, but also he's, he's entertained, isn't he? You, 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 you see some things you don't normally see. You've seen one shot in the first round, that weird uppercut. He threw it from almost like he had his back to the opponent. It was like a real trick shot. So you see things you don't usually see off a, off a guy. So it's entertainment. And we're all here to be entertained. You know, the purists won't love some of the stuff he does. But in this fight, to be fair, except for the little walk around, he's been quite proactive. And do you think we're still going to get this on November 29th? Uh, to an extent, because that's the way he is. I he won't get away with a lot of stuff. No, the, 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 the real question is, is can Billy Joe frustrate him? And if Billy Joe can take the can take the power, which I think he can, you know, I think he's a, I think he's a tough kid with good boxing skills. I think we'd, he's in for a genuine fight. Eubank. The but uppercuts he, he might fly in again from Eubank Jr. Throwing oh, lots yeah. of punches, not all of them landing. In fact, very few. Oh! oh. Massive uppercut again. Ciara yeah. took that well. Referee steps in. It's all over. One minute ten <laughs> left on the clock in the second, and it's another stoppage for Chris Eubank Jr. Maybe the referee who took his time against Sverbinski back in May. I remember Eubank helped him along the way because he kept yeah. going for little walks that night, but he was on it tonight and maybe maybe a little premature but i think it just no, I don't shortened the inevitable i don't think so because it's not as if he's, it's not as if just the first heavy shot that he's taken look at that it's a sickening uppercut he's up against the ropes and he took another uppercut there that, that's enough he already took a hiding for for what, four minutes or whatever it was that's enough that's enough the, the kid was game he was tough you know he took a, he, he took his licks but he had nothing nothing to come back with he was only going to get really seriously hurt 
I know the, crowd, the crowd booing because they want to see that, that show real knockout. I understand that, but it's in, it's in Eubank. Look, he looks, when he lets his hands go, I keep saying the same thing. He looks very, very good. November the 29th, we're going to see him not have everything his own way. Is he going to be like his dad, step up yeah. to the plate? Time will tell. Yeah, let, listen, let's, let's be honest. This was foreplay, and in all honesty, folks, it was, it was kind of teenage fumbling, really, wasn't it? So the, the main thing is coming up on November 29th, and how that plays out, we can't wait. 50 of round two, your referee has stopped the contest. He deemed Omar Siala was in no position to continue. The winner in the blue corner from Brighton, Chris Eubank Jr. Six straight wins in 2014, ten successive knockouts. The last hurdle before Billy Joe Saunders on November 29th at the XL has been cleared. D-Day awaits. A young man in Spain breathes a huge sigh of relief. Absolutely right, Alex. Uh, booze for Eubank in the ring. That's not the first time those two guys have heard booze in the ring, but the big test awaits. And looking very closely at Chris Eubank Jr., there would not appear to be any mark on him that could jeopardise that big date uh, next month. And Steve Willis, I, I want to bring a couple of things to your attention, first of all. First of all, Chris Eubank Sr., end of the round, gets into the ring with Ronnie Davis and Davis is the one who is told to get yeah, out of the um, ring, which is a very interesting little interlude uh, and just shows that uh, there's always something new to be <laughs> seen in boxing. A Here we go. Yeah, you're over the board, board of control rules. You're, I think you're only allowed one person in the ring at uh, any one time at the world, in between rounds. And of course, the board inspector there, you know, was, um, yeah. knew every rule, knew, rule, knew whatever rule it was. And um, Davis had to leave the ring and what Chris was doing, just standing there looking, what that was doing, he's some for any good, I don't know. But it's part of the show, part of, shall we say, the game that the Eubank seems to have with boxing. Yeah, it is, it is an amazing show uh, uh, as well. And uh, perhaps there was some sort of telepathic understanding between dad and son there. But he got the job done, didn't he? And again, uh, one or two boos with the stoppage. I'm not that upset no, no. with the stoppage. This fight was only going uh, one way. No problem. Yeah, that's exactly right. The fight was only going one way. It was the guy could mostly continue for another round or so. He was always going to get stopped. Alvin Finch is a good referee, actually. I really, I really rate him. And um, he, saw, he saw the way the fight was going, pulled Eubank Jr. off, and he'd seen enough. Um, and I thought the stoppage was perfect. I think the boos really were only, were only token. Absolutely right, and that's a good stoppage and another fine victory for uh, Chris Eubank Jr. He is now 18 unbeaten, and the Eubank Roadshow is going to chat to Bunsey. Thanks very much indeed, Jim. Uh, Chris uh, Jr., first of all, can we just confirm uh, no carts, no hand injuries, no rib injuries? Just like I said, I'm not going to be, um, I'm not looking to get injured in this fight. The main fight is on the 29th against Average Joe. I'm 100% fit. That was just a taster of what's to come. You seem like you're enjoying yourself in there tonight, even more so than normal. Is that a fair comment? You know, um, this guy didn't deserve to be in, with him, in the ring with me tonight. You know, I had, a, I had a solid opponent lined up. He pulled out.